Hey YouTube, how's it going? My name is Lonnie Du. We're gonna keep it cash okay. today. Not that that's much different from every day. We're reacting to a freaking video about the company THQ from billions to bankrupt in five years. That's a long time, if you ask me, but I'm not a company and companies are not a guy. And in company years, that's that's pretty quick to go bankrupt. The Golden Bolt made this freaking video. It sounded interesting, dude. THQ, I don't really know what they've made, but freaking SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom was in the thumbnail, so I'm pretty sure they made that. And that's um, good enough for me. I mean, it's a cool game. It's no SpongeBob in the Cosmic Shake, but you'd know that if you didn't go bankrupt. Sorry, I just wanted to rub some salt in the wounds, I guess. This is the UDraw Game Tablet, a $70 Nintendo Wii peripheral released by THQ on November what? 15, 2010. That Dude, was... they were doing God's work. They made a tablet for the console that literally came with a tablet. What? I see why they can. I see why they might not have done the best. So financially like shelves during its launch week, a product that Yikes. never performed so well that THQ didn't have enough units to launch the thing in Europe before Christmas. Bro, it sounds like Nintendo runs your company. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Within six months, it had sold 1.7 million units, far above expectations. This is also the UDraw game tablet. A That's for the PlayStation peripheral for the oh. PS3 and Xbox 360 released on November 15, okay. 2011. Okay. You're triple the dipping. American protests of at least half of the company. It launched without a target audience, without a killer app. Hell, without a killer what app. What about a Walmart audience? Even in production for this new model, it flopped so badly that 1.4 million units of this HD model never even made it to retailers, costing $100 million in lost revenue and putting the nail in the coffin of THQ's licensed kids games division. On... Oh. I'm disappointed. November 10th, 2012, THQ announced that it was about to default on $50 million in loans. It was only okay. weeks away from filing for bankruptcy. To My financial advice, asterisk, I am an influencer, not an ass, and financial advisor, uh, don't do that. Don't even get a credit card ever if you don't need one. Just don't get one. Okay? Just don't get one. And don't get two, and don't get any, and don't get fifty million dollars worth. Clear this drawing tablet. It's not free money. The sole factor in the company's demise. It's a debt it collecting mechanism. The breaking point, the symbol of all of THQ's bubbling issues up until then. That's Disney. THQ had fallen far. That's Evans rapidly from its business peak in the year 2007, thanks to the following year's global financial crisis, as well as shifts in the gaming market, as budgets and player expectations ballooned far past the licensed projects the publisher had cranked out. Ballooned like on Deviant to art on an almost monthly basis for over a decade but even i hate gaming the very end thq was only one fumbled bag away from scraping through to the next console generation a few months away from its delayed projects releasing and propping them up just a bit longer one success away from turning it around entirely just as we look back today and think that the writing was on the wall and that THQ was destined to fail, we look at the U-Draw today as that fumbled bag, as another stupid gimmick from a flailing company that was circling the drain. But the reality is far more interesting than that. It's the story of two separate groups within THQ, essentially operating independently and often at odds with one another, all while the CEO ignored the growing divide within the company. It's the story of a company swept up in overnight industry-wide change, but unlike so many other studios and publishers at the time, this was a company that was a single hard decision away at multiple different points from making it out. Man, what a cool logo. What does that stand for exactly? They couldn't even agree on the letters to make a, a goddamn conceivable sound? <laughs> Damn, boy. We thick, kind it of. It shouldn't have failed. That's but why that it failed. Difficult decision Damn, SpongeBob, why? More of THQ's thousands of jobs than the 600 they had already cut at the start of the recession, and it involved completely moving away from Pony, given them years he's alive. Of success, in Don't get any ideas, you sick fucks. Earlier. This tablet is the symbol of a company that went half in on two opposing strategies and died because of it. This is the UDraw game tablet and the collapse of THQ. Damn. They really went all in on this tablet thing, huh? Is there any way we could dial back the tablet thing? Although the UDraw didn't enter production as far back as 2007, that's where we've got to go to set the table. This was the company's apex, the first time its annual revenue broke the billion dollar mark, placing it firmly as one of the top publishers in the industry. 
they found that success by dominating the licensed children's They make tech in the power of Juju? Yeah, okay. That makes right. sense. I'm sorry. KFC. Just saying. It's not quite Banjo-Kazooie, is it? But it did have a Nickelodeon show that also failed. Bread and butter was no one wants to see Tech nor his Juju. Film and toy tie -ins on I freaking every... bought that game, dude. But I freaking remember that I traded in like way better games to get it. So it was like, not only were my expectations probably too high, but also Tech and the power of Juju. Not so critically acclaimed, I don't think. I don't know, dude. I'm just keeping it cash. Indoor game voices. System with a pulse and even some without. They were easy games to turn around. The sort it's of Big Plankton. He's been inflated. Like my game. expectations as a gamer. Sorry. Quality standard, the games would usually sell themselves. It was a safe bet game after game. Low risk, high reward. In fact, for much of the mid-2000s... I'm highly game, rewarded. ...you even propped up a large part of the oh. Australian game development scene. Oh. They were providing consistent contract oh. work like this or... or in fact, for most of the 2000s, THQ being weird. even propped up a large part of the Australian Oh, THQ Australia would maybe consistent contract okay, okay, work okay. like this or jobs at their internal Australian studio. There was lower demand for jobs in the game industry down under at the time, and although it didn't have the soul of developing original IP, it was a paycheck for companies like Halfbrick, who specialized in Game Boy and DS ports. THQ had built an Back in my day, freaking I didn't even know Halfbrick did that dude. Shouts out to them for the jump scare. 100 employees by the year 2007, off the backs of long-standing agreements with Nickelodeon. Dude, these games look Mattel, sick. WWE, They're all like and pretty much any company that made licensed stuff, which I mean, I admittedly I like licensed the games. <laughs> They're awesome. For a they got all my favorite day. little fellas like this guy. It warned investors in almost every annual financial statement that the license Fucking market Zach was Scott, subscribe if you have not, looking ass. Moment. With the transition between console generations... Yeah, we're now owned by the WWE fully. ...longer than it ever had before, with parents waiting to buy the newest systems, THQ had to juggle several different versions of each property in order to cast the widest net. Although, to be fair, even when it didn't have to do that, THQ chose to greenlight a redundant amount of games. The Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation 2 each had completely distinct Holy WWE game Holy franchises. Holy mouths on these guys. ...console WWE games from 2001 to 2005. Anyway, what was initially a sure thing, a profitable release structure that THQ had down to a science, would quickly become... Back at the barnyard? Where Pixar's Before they were back? Dude, what the hits, hell? I freaking eight million copies across almost as many platforms. I want to play all like these. Avatar, the last Airbender, would underperform. But I don't want to pay full price for any of them, so that makes sense. SP and Xbox 360, leading to many one and done releases, many internal admissions that maybe there wasn't a market for this particular kid-focused property on this or that system. Cheap hiccups when isolated, <laughs> but they add up when that was THQ has to pay for licensing and royalties on each and every game that the company can't always <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, me when I'm dead as hell. And it's nicer mohawks and better pants. A dangerous one when a company builds its entire empire off of it without a backup plan. THQ signed lengthy contracts with the Nickelodeons and Disneys that often required a minimum number of games per year. Games that THQ often knew would flop, but that it was required to sink money into anyway. During an interview with Polygon, a former manager at THQ recalled, quote, Near the end, we were still getting screwed for Nickelodeon games, which we hadn't worked on in years. We still owed a ton of money. And Jeez. In the same year that THQ posted its record profits, the iPhone first released, with the App Store launching the following year, both occurring right as the Great Recession began. For more reasons than one, it's That's when Steve Jobs said those other phones, yuck! Became Use a mine. lot more appetizing for parents to spend a dollar or two on games that could entertain their kids rather than forty dollars or more. True. Remember Halfbrick, that independent Australian developer that mostly worked on handheld ports of licensed. I remember games? them. I named them earlier because they would become a shining example of this market shift. They developed the wildly successful Fruit Ninja and Jetpack Joyride and never looked back. Children's media licenses began jumping to the cheaper smartphone platforms as well, leaving countless studios and thousands of employees across the industry with nothing to work on. 
DHQ wasn't the only one hit with this devastating one-two punch. EA laid off hundreds in 2008 and 2009. Activision, despite its soaring success thanks to your Guitar Heroes and Call of Duties, it laid off around 500 employees between 2008 and 2010, some of those taking place as part of the merger with Blizzard, a company that itself was also weathering these new stormy waters. The already struggling Midway lost another 100 plus employees, and THQ cut its mobile game staff by 100 to focus on its smartphone titles before later closing a third of its studios and laying off another 600 console developers. So you're saying the, the iPhone killed this company? Uh oh. Games were, That's and awkward. Still often are, called a recession proof industry. Tell that to the unemployment line. The core games team apparently latched on to Bilson quickly, seeing that he cared about genuine game quality in a way that executives usually didn't. The licensed developers, however, didn't care for somebody coming in and making so many suggestions to their projects since they were on such tight deadlines as it was due to licensing agreements. Apparently, Bilson was also pretty straightforward with his ideas, which was a bit crass to the folks who had been living and breathing Jimmy Neutron, Britney Spears, Pixar, and Scooby-Doo mm. for the better part of their careers. Keep the deadline issue in mind for later. Bilson wasn't just some up till 4 a.m. dude bro gamer, however. I mean, he did stay up till 4 a.m. sometimes playing the newest AAA titles, according to other employees, but that was so that he could try and chat about the latest and greatest the competition was putting out. Despite maybe coming off as a super core gamer, he's actually the one who greenlit the UDraw game tablet during the brief time that he actually had a say outside oh, of- Oh yeah, way to go, whatever Australia. your name was. The concept for a drawing tablet peripheral had come to two of THQ Australia's marketing team, not designers, as a way to complement a Wii sequel to the successful DS game Drawn to Life. At the time that it was greenlit, we weren't quite yet fully inundated with a hundred million- He drew an tablet. NFT way back then? Fucking lame, Cars and Wii but also all impressive. Peripherals were How do you all do the that? rage, even more so than the phrase all the rage. And with the Wii itself still impossible to find in 2008 due to incredible demand even in the face of the recession, it was a no-brainer to get in on that action. Or at least it was a no-brainer for a company that wasn't publicly committing to a core gaming focus. Again, say more stupid one thing, pictures of monkeys. Do another. No one wants this that shit. This is what killed THQ: the company's reluctance to fully commit. It's half measures. Just a moment ago, I snuck in a reference to a Warhammer MMO that was in development. A bold move for a company even at the peak of its influence, considering how many Warhammer more like Snorhammer. Why does he have to turn into, into a balloon? Why do I have to keep sub being subjected to this? I didn't look this up. You're this wasn't a setup from the start. I've never it. seen this, I and swear. And I won't be saving or, um, it for later. Themselves, or any of the obstacles that might show up in the stages, it's really, really neat. The game tablet itself works surprisingly well for what you might expect from a gimmicky early 2010s peripheral. Besides the pre-you, if you will. I thought of that myself and I don't even work at this company, but that's their problem. Oops. Just motion controls and some buttons for things like erasing, swapping drawing tools, or zooming in and out, as well as Is that Zach Efron playing with this shit? The stylus has two connected buttons around where your thumb would go, and the tip of the pen nice is also chair, a buddy. pressure sensitive. Cal real mature putting plums on the, the chair. Is mostly solid, even doing a good job of following the stylus when it's not making contact with the drawing. Hey surface. man, ain't it's no one buying quite, this shit. Balanced, and it feels you said so yourself. Old, and the motion controls feel centered despite the Wiimote being on the left side of the tablet. Putting it all together, it's not hard at all to see why this device succeeded on the Wii. Just as a drawing tablet alone, ignoring any actual video The game, Wii was yeah. the time to do this, I guess, because freaking remember, people were buying those fucking Wii Fit things to stand on, and guitars to guitar on, and drums to drum on, dude. It fell off soon after, because it was overly saturated with stupid plastic, and people only have such big family rooms to contain such bullshit, but you know... It kind of makes more sense than Games it sounds like to my current 2024 brain. Endless entertainment playing with the different drawing tools. No one would ever buy this shit now. Just get an iPad, idiot. It's way better. Like the art style. Issues with deadlines in mind. Well, here's where another of the company's many double standards. Their logo changed. It looks simple. From the jump, the like me. Seem to get constant Maybe me and a company kidding. isn't so different after all, dude. It's a family side because, well, where are the games? 
the more tenured developers on the kids' teams were used to cranking out multiple projects a year on tight deadlines with no room to adjust budgets. So for THQ's publicly announced priority to be these big budget titles that wouldn't come out for two or three Goblins. years or even longer, why were unknown studios like Vigil working on expensive MMOs or $20 million budget games like Darksiders for years at a time? What were they doing that was so special, huh? And the core games team was pressured on the other side by THQ's Upper Brass, who took years to accept that these original IPs didn't necessarily have to operate on the same rigid release structure as all of the licensed games, because quality mattered more here than the timeline pitched two years prior at the start of pre-production. It wasn't tied to a movie's release date, so the release date could be a little fluid. Because they didn't make a Goblins movie, but that's why the game didn't take off. Dude, you gotta have the movie. Just kidding. I would not watch a movie about goblins unless... Unless it was also a, a movie where they got into the helium factory. Maybe messed around a bit. Gobbled a bit, a bit of funny gas. Whoops, their bodies are inflating. Much like my gaming expectations for the film. Look at that nut hole. Earlier in 2011, the FPS Homefront wasn't allowed the few months of polish that it may have needed to go from a middling game into a game that had a chance at succeeding in such a saturated FPS market. Even though the Sheesh. game had sold fairly that sucked. Well. THQ CEO before and after this point had publicly pandered that core gaming was their direction in order to appease shareholders, but his licensed game mentality, it never left. The inertia was too strong, and the ones who had to say and had the ability to make the changes were too afraid to commit. Where the core division's creative lead, Dan Gilson, apparently had to fight to allocate budgets for projects like Darksiders 2 or Metro 2033 or Evolve or even money just to publish South Park The Stick of Truth, a game whose production had already mostly been funded. While these constant battles went on, the family game side allegedly still operated with the majority of the company's development budget without any oversight. It didn't matter that seemingly nobody at the company thought that an HD version of Udraw was a good idea because that's how THQ was set up by this point. Left arm had its way, right arm had its way, and the head just let the two slap each other silly. I'd call it the stranger. So although pouring millions into an ill-advised MMO wasn't the best use of money, while continuing this is to blow money and resources- Just a sad thing to see, dude. Accurate. MMOs ruin lives cost more money than they could ever return was maybe a bad idea, and while it took going from a $6 stock price to $4.75 to learn what the upper brass had already been told by folks like Bilson, you know, that delaying a game is sometimes okay, these were all symptoms of a very poorly run company, but not individually devastating. The UDRAW's HD console release? That was crippling, and it was the final straw for first the kids game division, as well as THQ as a company afterwards. Only three games were ever released for this version of UDRAW, all at launch in November 2011. There's an updated UDRAW Studio, an updated Pictionary, and that Marvel Comic Combat game. Those are system sellers. If Sign me up. updated games were being counted as part of those six games in the pipeline that the CEO had mentioned, then his math would have checked out, even if that is disgustingly misleading. You can get these for $15 now. Former sponge bed. Me noy noy me noy me. Nowhere along the Dude, line are you saying we got robbed of the Doodle Bob drawing game? That is a freaking tragedy. I want a me hoy hoy me noy me in the digital realm. Any game envisioned for this version of the tablet that would remotely appeal to the PS3 or Xbox's main audiences, which that is were, true. of course, different from the Wii's demographics. Remember, this company was really good most of the time at knowing exactly what demos that it could hit on which consoles. It meticulously cut out unnecessary platforms during the- Dude's big. You're not wrong transition to the HD era when it found that certain properties underperformed on, say, Xbox 360, and yet this thing made it all the way through production without any of the upper management on the kids' side of THQ questioning that fact. And somehow, since Bill's core game team could only suggest or argue, not actually force a change, nobody thought to limit the UDRAW's production order on these HD systems. I really, really tried to avoid the what are they thinking sort of phrasing when revisiting past failures or questionable decisions, but the company's own staff was screaming that sentiment, and with good reason. At launch, THQ had produced two and a half million PS3 and Xbox 360 UDRAW tablets. That's 40% more than had been made and sold for the Wii across its entire first year on the market. The most generous defense possible that this means they only the made fuck one is this guy respectfully the system still means they spent tens of millions of dollars on r d and production for two new versions of the tablet that would work on two different systems and that whoever had the checkbook thought it would be smart to have an entire year's worth of stock ready to go by launch day all just 
assuming that they would fly off the shelves thanks to high demand for Pictionary and Marvel comic combat and nothing else for People at least love that the first shit, right? 6 to 12 months on the market. Outside of the early Xbox 360 with the Red Ring of Death issues, there has not been a physical production fiasco in the games industry on the level of this HD Udraw disaster. Oh, it halved shit. THQ's revenues for the quarter. It doubled its losses, and it directly led to the company defaulting on loans that could have been and would have been manageable if anybody in the chain of command had thought, wait, maybe we should cut this order down to maybe a million units total just to be safe. Not even cutting the doomed to fail HD versions entirely, just cutting the order size down. There's no excuse for this amount of malpractice. There was no possible breakout hit for THQ that could cover and make up that cost. Saints Row 3 overperformed expectations that very same quarter, which THQ lauded in its financial disclosures as evidence that its AAA strategy was working. WWE 12 was outperforming the prior year's game. Even Homefront had turned a profit that year despite the reviews and instantly having its staff killed off. But you draw Killed off? PS3 Holy and shit, Xbox, dude. Despite Literally. Despite total failure on the PS3 and Xbox, THQ killed off its kids and family division. Killed off! It's kids Shortly and family hundreds of for content, hardcore. I'm milking this. In order to focus solely on its last few chances at survival. You know, once Danny Bilson's out, I'm out. Them's the freaking rules, dude. This was interesting. It seems like it all could have been freaking avoided. Shout out to the Golden Bull for making this video. THQ stood for that's hardcore. When it came to their, their losses on their credit card and the interest that they owe or something. I don't know, dude. Thank you for watching this freaking reaction video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the freaking next one. Peace.